Hello there. Hopefully you can hear me over the garbage microphone I have on my camera. But I'm Wolf 1918 and this is going to be the first video in a series about building a Fokker D7 kit from Aerodrome Airplanes. Over the past few days I've been working on this, which is the rudder kit. This is the first time I've done something like this and I'm sure you can kind of see it in the build quality. It's been a joy to build. I've really enjoyed it, even with the frustrations that have kind of come out of it and the mistakes I've made. This series is something that I'm hoping to make in order to kind of show other viewers the build process behind making something like this. There's been a lot of interest in this kit ever since I was talking about it to some people years and years ago. I've, I've owned this rudder kit since 2022 or early 2023, and I just haven't had time to build it. I've owned it for two years and just haven't touched it, and I'm finally working on it. That's because of a couple things. For starters, I'm sort of in a better place now to where I actually have the space or can actually set aside the space to work on it. And there's a couple things that are lining up that might see me being able to have the whole kit for pretty cheap, including an engine and propeller. That's sort of what I'm hoping for. This series will focus on the build techniques, my experiences, my recommendations, and, you know, sort of my thoughts on the overall build kit. There aren't a lot of videos out there on YouTube or just sitting around about people building these things. There is a series going on about a SOP with Camel build down in Australia. I will link that in the description or in a, a pinned comment. It's a great series. It shows a lot about the build um, experience of a, of a really talented gentleman down there who has been working on it for the better part of two years. It is an excellent series that I've learned a lot from in terms of the build techniques that are used. And you'll see a lot of the critiques about aerodrome kits and some of their quality control from that video. Some of it I do disagree with, but that's just what's going to happen. This kind of stuff is very opinionated, and aerodrome kits do have their controversy for whether that's earned or not. They do exist. It's all run by one guy down over in Missouri, um, Robert. He is an excellent guy to talk to. He's been super helpful with me and being very patient and answering all my questions that I've had, whether they've been stupid questions or questions that I couldn't actually find an answer to anywhere else. But he's a great guy. Um, the designs that he's made are extremely sturdy. So even without the rudder being completed, it's still a fairly sturdy structure that I feel confident in putting my, uh, putting my control of an airplane behind, even considering my mistakes that I've made with it. That leads me to one of the things that I do want to talk about, the sturdiness of these aircraft. Now, without having actually built one myself, I can't speak from personal experience. I can only speak from the experience of others who I've talked to or read their opinions of online. And most people, whether they enjoyed the build process or they hated it, whether they thought Aerodrome aircraft made excellent kits or whether they thought they were cheaply made, all say generally the same thing. The designs of the kits are extremely well made. Robert is excellent at designing these things. They are made for redundancy. They are made for integrity. They will not fail on you. I don't think I've heard of a single example of an aerodrome aircraft kit structurally failing because of the inherent design. In fact, I don't even know if I've heard of an aerodrome airplane kit structurally failing in flight. Usually the structure failures happen because someone left the airplane that they painted black in the sun and the covering shrank and crumpled it. And the times that I have heard of an aerodrome aircraft crashing has been because the engine failed, because either the person used a rather new engine that hadn't been tested fully, or they were using a cheaper engine that they didn't properly restore, leading to the engine kind of going out. Most of the time, those are fine, because the stall speed of an aerodrome aircraft is about 30 miles, 30 to 40 miles per hour, depending on the model you get, which means you can bring that thing down to a very slow pace before touching down, which greatly reduces the chance of injury to your person and damage to the airframe. Uh, especially if you're able to find a clear spot. And these aircraft, with their larger wheels, are built for landing on grass strips and airdromes, i.e. large square fields where you can just kind of land against the wind no matter the direction. So if you've clicked on this video and you're someone who's interested in getting an airdrome kit started, what I would recommend from my own experience, go to the website, find the model you want to build, and buy the rudder kit. This rudder kit will arrive in a few weeks. It takes him a bit to put it together. Again, he's a one-man show. And then you can kind of go from there. The things I would recommend buying if you're someone like me who doesn't really do a lot of metalworking or a lot of uh, shop work in general. I, I work a white collar job. I don't really have a lot of time to be out in the shop just tinkering around on random things on any given day between my job and working on stuff here. Get yourself a drill press, get yourself a metal brake, and get yourself a vise just to start out with. You're also going to want a hand riveter. Um, now, I was recommended a, a pneumatic, and I do have it. But for now, I've been using this because my um, I don't have everything set up for my shop yet. And when I do, I'll be able to get the pneumatic riveter with all the stuff out there. And hopefully, I can also get my generator working to where I don't need to lug a, an extension cord from the house to the shop. Allowing me to do more 
with, with less, basically. Um, make sure when you make your cuts, you are quadruple checking everything. That was a mistake I made. You can triple check all you want, but if you're not checking over and over and over again before you make that cut, you're going to make a mistake. And obviously, uh, advice told to me by people who have built kits before, the greatest enemy of done is perfect. Probably screwed that up, but basically the, the perfect is the greatest enemy of done. The important thing when building kit aircraft is to make sure that not only do you complete it, but you complete it safely. If you spend all your time worrying about the exact shape of the rudder and trying to get it perfect and the exact place that you're putting that hole in the tube so that you can fit things together, you're never going to get it done. You're just not. Especially if you misalign something and you go, well, now i got to get a new tube. Well, now you're out more money. You're redoing everything. You're taking longer. Instead of being able to change things just a little bit to get it to work and be safe, even though it won't be perfect. And the thing about building kits, you're building an airplane. Not very many people are going to sit there and call out every little tiny flaw you made. And the only person who's going to really know about it is you. And you're probably going to forget about them at some point. So I hope you stick around with me on this journey. I don't know when the next part's going to be out. It'll probably be when I finish this rudder and kind of talking about the total experiences with some footage of me working on things like making the ribs and uh, some video of like some of the mistakes I've made. After that, it just kind of depends on what happens. I've got a pretty big event coming up in, uh, in about 10 days. Uh, there's a 160th anniversary of Battle of Bentonville. They're doing reenactment there. I'm going to be a tin typist. So the funds I get from that are going to go towards continuing this kit project. And we'll see kind of how that goes. If I end up getting enough funds and it's still available in the right amount of time and I'm able to clear enough out space, so a lot of ifs, I'm going to go down to New Orleans and pick up the partially completed kit that has the engine, um, the propeller, and the rest of the aerodrome kit, which has like the tail section, fuselage, and landing assembly all built. Um, now, granted, I am con I'm considering not doing that because I have been given a lot of good advice talking about be wary of partially completed kits. I've done a long interview with the guy, and it seems like it's a fairly sturdy, sturdily constructed kit. He's very experienced in building kits, and he's working on four kits at once, including this one that he's selling. Um, and he just doesn't have enough time. So that sounds like a really good, um, you know, it's a really good sign for me. And as long as things work out and he doesn't sell it before I'm able to get the funds, I think I'm going to go that route. The issues for me, though, is the engine is not one that I want to use. Um, so I might end up getting, I might sell it to buy an A65 because it can swing the same size prop as what he has, 83-inch culver prop. And so that way I can just kind of change things up and have an engine that actually sounds like an aircraft engine because it is instead of an engine that constantly sounds like an, uh, a car, you know, trying to speed up. So, yeah, like I said, I hope you guys stick around and watch this journey. And if you guys want to support the project, um, you can just subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, help the algorithm out. Maybe watch the whole video again to boost the watch time. I don't know. I might actually start a program if people want to do it, which is if you support, you know, the project itself, um, like with the channel membership or whatever, I'll put your name on uh, some of the aluminum tubing and so that the plane has a little bit of every single person who supported it. But that's just kind of an idea I had, which I thought would be neat. I might do that just for channel members in general. Not specifically for the project, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, for those of you who have been longtime members, I am going to be releasing some more aviation history videos soon. I've got a couple scripts lined up. Uh, I've just been really busy with my day job. And when I haven't been busy with my day job, we've been working on getting our garden and our property set up for spring. Appreciate all you guys' support and your patience with me because I said I was going to release them once a week, and that just hasn't happened. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. It means a whole bunch to me. Uh, and I hope you guys continue watching the channel, even after this garbage video.